Oh, the weather outside is frightful. But the fire is so delightful. Hi, welcome to another old steam powered machine shop. We're winding down the season here and finishing up the last few jobs, one of which was a uh, domestic two horsepower hit and miss engine. It's a, a sleeve and more job similar to the ones I've done before uh, using the horizontal boring mill, <clears throat> which is not actually really a steam powered machine in here, but uh, it's probably pre-World War II vintage and I uh, thought you might like to see how that went. So uh, thanks a lot for your interest and support and uh, all the likes and comments especially and uh, we'll talk to you later. This is a hit and miss engine sleeve job I'm setting up on the horizontal boring mill. This is a, a one and a half horsepower domestic uh, the piston is very loose and the cylinder is very worn so uh, I'm going to turn the piston slightly to make it round and uh, this will get bored out about a quarter of an inch for a sleeve and then the sleeve will be bored to fit the piston. Now uh, I know pistons, let me get the piston. Pistons were made typically not round because there's a different amount of material here, here, and it's fairly thin here. So as the piston heats up, it goes out around. So they make them out around to begin with so they'll be round when they're at operating temperature. Now, I don't think this piston was cam ground like that. I, I don't think these hit and misses did that. I've never had a new piston to measure to see, but this one certainly isn't round and it's got a very nice center hole left here. So I'm just going to skim off enough to make true up the trunk of this piston and that'll be the size that we'll shoot for. I'm lining up the block on the table the usual way using a feeler gauge against the stop here checking it all the way around and then running it to the other end resetting the stop because it's so severely tapered and then checking it back there and tapping things around tighten it when you change one end it changes the other and you go back and move that back around so I've gone back and forth on this thing about 10 times and I've got it pretty close this is so severely worn that there's really nothing that you can uh, rely on to set it up. Uh, it is fairly straight on the bottom. It was obviously bored using the bottom surface as a reference. So uh, I'll make a trial cut through there and keep uh, bumping the table in or out or the uh, bar up or down until I can get it to touch off in places all the way through. I've got a board a quarter of an inch anyway. so. That's not critical.
Okay, I've got the tool set in here with a set screw and uh, I'm going to run it out about maybe five thousandths and take a trial cut through there and see how I am lined up. Because it's pretty hard to line it up, it's so worn and out around and screwed up. So, uh, I can do this where you can see. of the cylinder from the lever position so I gotta run around there and shut it off up all the way through. Got a lot of light cuts to make on it because uh, uh, stuck out here so long on this bar it tends to chatter. So we'll just take it slow. Probably about maybe 15 thousandths a cut. Run it back by hand.
Okay, so I got a couple of cuts down through there and it's working out pretty nice. I'm going to stop at this point and wait till I get the sleeve. It should be in tomorrow. And uh, measure up the sleeve, show you how to do that. Uh, and, uh, and figure out a diameter that I have to bore this to. Here's the setup on the piston. Uh, number 64 stare indicator. You can see it's a little out around there. I'm not s squeezing it too tight because I don't want to distort it. Uh, but I'm just going to skim off enough to get it round and straight. I'm running a little south bend on steam today because I got it fired up.
The ring lands are usually backed off a little smaller diameter than the trunk of the piston. So I'm going to do that when I get done. I'll probably put about maybe five thousand. Take about five thousand off this, 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 and that. I left the piston back just a little bit from the jaws so I can get right up to the end. That should do pretty nice. I think I might just take a file and knock this corner down a little bit. Okay, uh, piston came out 3.978. I want six thousandths clearance on it, so it makes a finish bore of 3.984. Here's the sleeve, and uh, I showed you how I do this before, I'll, I'll do it again. <clears throat> Measured in uh, six places, bottom, middle, and top, and 90 degrees apart, bottom, middle, and top, and averaging. Four one twenty eight. One twenty eight five. One twenty eight five. Four one twenty nine. I just measured to the half thousand. Okay, so if you add up all of those measurements, there's six of them, you get this. If you divide by six, you get an average diameter of 4.1287 for the sleeve. Okay, so the sleeve diameter less one and a half thousandths for the interference fit is 4.1272. That's the bore that I'm shooting for in the block that the sleeve will press into. So uh, the inside diameter of the sleeve here loose is uh, about 3.9 so it's got to go out to 3.984 so that should leave plenty of room to clean it up and uh, I like using these 332nd sleeves rather than the uh, 8th inch because they uh, take a whole lot less boring. This is the high speed steel tool. Uh, you might be able to see how much better the surface finish is. This is like machining by the seat of your pants. You're constantly fighting chatter with this long bar, but if you get this speed and depth and feed 
in the radius of the tool point right, it'll go right on through nice. at all, a very tight radius, if any, and then uh, when I get to the last few light cuts, I'll regrind the tool uh, with just a slight radius, and uh, this is a high-speed steel tool, I get much better surface in it for some reason, and uh, carbide. Okay, now, <clears throat> I got the sleeve just tapped in, started, and uh, the uh, threaded rod through there, and a porta polar set up on this side. The whole idea of this setup is to put this sleeve in here, set up on this table so it, the, the setup is not disturbed. When I go back to bore the cylinder, it should be li still lined up correctly. The threaded rod is is way too long on each end, but I don't want to cut it off because I may need it that long someday. So I've got about maybe four inches to work with here, and then I'll move the table ahead a little bit. I got it all the way up as far as I can get it in that direction. So we'll give it a try here. Had a little wood block in here to hold it threaded rod up while I was getting it set up. That's uh, one and a half thousandths interference fit on that and pressing it in there cold, it's going pretty good. Just about the right amount. Okay, I'm at the end of the stroke of my quarter power here, so that down. Screw the screw in. some tabs here on the base of this jack because this jack goes into a press uh, that I use for pressing piston pins and uh, automotive stuff and they're right in the way but if I put a space on here about an inch I can get around them Just that you need about six hands to do this. Okay. It's starting to get noticeably hard and I'm seeing about a half ton on the, on the gauge. Of course, the further you, in you go, the harder it goes. Okay, that's the end of that one.
that's it. to the sleeves sticking out here. Feeding it in by hand. Get a little more seating pressure right there, but I'm gonna go down a little bit. Just catches on the ridge. Just catches on the edge right there.
should do nicely. Give it a little home. Here's a brand new 70 grit stones. Right out of the box. Down to the last couple of jobs in the shop for the season, in the modern shop. These are uh, uh, 66 Chevy 396 heads, and they have a particular problem in that uh, the guides are semi-finished when they put them in at the factory, and then they bore the ID of the guide out and cut the seat at the same time on the assembly line. So. <clears throat> the hole through the valve guide is not necessarily concentric with the bore that it's pressed into. So when you press those out and press new guides in, there's a real good chance, in fact almost a hundred percent chance, that the valve guide center line is not going to be concentric with the seat at all. And there's service bulletins out on that and then they tell you that you're probably going to have to put 
it's so far out of whack that you're probably going to have to put seats in it. So that's what I did. Put seats in this, so I'm just grinding. This is the last operation. I'm grinding the, uh, the seats in three angle and then resurface this. Bye.